There are certain benchmarks when it comes to times and distances for running. And for me, it's that elusive 40 minute 10K. But whatever your current running goal is, we're going to give you the training tools and tips that will make you run a fast 10K. Let's be realistic and start by working out what your current 10K time would be. Now, don't worry if you don't have a 10K PB at the moment. There are several other ways in which you can work out your predicted 10K pace. But just to be clear, a predicted 10K time wouldn't simply be double your 5K time should you have one. But if you do, or half marathon or other similar running distances, then you can input them into this pace calculator, which should give you a 10K predicted time. If this predicts you at a minute or so out and you're eight weeks away from your target race, then that should be a realistic target, depending on the training that you've been doing up until now. If, however, it comes out at you being able to already run a 40 minute or under, then with the correct pacing and the right conditions, there's no reason you can't go and do that tomorrow. If you have a different target time, however, then let's be realistic. Assess how much training you're currently doing, the time scale you've got to your target race, and just simply work backwards from there. Now you've got your race pace, you can work out what pace you need to train at, so it's time to get the work done. In order to run a fast 10K, you're going to need to mix up your training and include speed work, so running faster than your race pace. You need to do some work that's at or around race pace, tempo runs, which will be a little bit slower, and then long, steady runs. But if you are stepping up from being a 5K runner, consistency is going to be key. And for the simplicity of the maths, let's assume a spot on 40 minutes 10K. So that gives us uh, four minutes per kilometer or for the non-metrics amongst you, six minutes and 26 per mile. So let's assume that you've got the ability to do four to five runs in your week. However, if you're only currently doing, let's say two to three, then be sure not to build that frequency up too quickly. Include one long steady run. Should be longer than your race, so in this case, more than 10K. And if you're gonna be running with a friend, then you should be able to chat for the whole duration. And this is important because you really won't gain any extra from doing it that much faster, and that builds the aerobic base that we're looking for. And going any faster actually is gonna be detrimental in the long run. This is running at your anaerobic threshold where your body isn't producing more lactic than it can remove. So you're not gonna get a buildup of lactic acid and you won't get that horrible jelly leg feeling. It's often thought of as being comfortably hard. So running at around 90% of your maximum heart rate and a pace that you should be able to maintain for 20 to 25 minutes. This is gonna be slightly slower than your race pace, but don't get hung up on looking at your watch. It's more about the effort. So you're gonna be running at your top end and it's a session that I personally really enjoy because it feels like you've done a really decent amount of work afterwards. Speed work. These are about the sessions that are going to help you with your top end speed. But I'll warn you, if it's done correctly, they're going to hurt. This is about the quality. It's going to be running faster than your race pace, but of course for shorter intervals. For example, a session of 6 to 8 by 800s targeting just faster than your race pace. Race pace being 96 seconds per lap, so giving us 3 minutes and 5 seconds to 3 minutes and 10 seconds per 800 meters with 2 minutes of rest between each 800. Then each week progress this by reducing your rest and or increasing the number of reps, but crucially keeping the pace the same. You need strength endurance for a 10K and hills are a great way to build this. So try to incorporate at least once a week, either as short, sharp hill efforts when you run hard up the hill and then recover by jogging back down. So for example, 45 second efforts times 10 or incorporate it into a longer run. If you're doing it on a longer run, find an undulating terrain and then you'll naturally work hard up the hills, easy down the hills, making it into a natural fartlek type run. Now this is as per the long run, but it should be even easier. This is just about the mind switching off and getting the body moving. And it really doesn't matter how slowly you run for this run, because it really is just about getting the blood flowing, the legs moving, and simply spending some time on your feet. I know we've talked about five sessions here, but if you're only gonna do say four sessions in the week, then you could interswap the fartlek and hill session with say the tempo run, or you could simply remove the easy active recovery and add in a swim or some other form of active recovery. 
No matter how long your training block has been, don't forget to include in a taper and make sure that your legs are fresh when you get to race day. There's no point in doing loads of training but then coming in with tired, heavy legs. And on the flip side, you also don't want to taper off too soon because you don't want to start losing form and fitness. So as you do reduce the volume, keep up some work with intensity. So a few bits of efforts running at race pace, doing some strides slightly above race pace as well will help just keeping your legs tuned in and getting them ready to race. By race day, you've done all the hard work and you should have a pretty good gauge of where you're at from all that training and pretty much have that pace locked in. And if you're gonna be racing using a GPS watch, be sure to set the lap times to give you splits per K or per mile so you can check the pacing during the event. But please be mindful that it's all too easy to go off too hard. So just be careful because you're gonna have fresh legs, especially if the taper's gone well. On race day, you've already rested, and because of that, your legs are going to need a thorough warm-up. There's nothing worse than having really fresh legs that feel great, but take a couple of K to actually get warmed up into the race. So if you want to actually see how to do a good race warm-up, we've already made a video on that, which you can find in the description below this video. Finally, don't forget to nail your race nutrition. Trying to have a high carb meal, minimum of three hours before, and limit fiber intake in the 24 hours leading up to it. Don't forget about being well hydrated either, but equally, try not to overdo it. As for fueling during the race, you're not gonna deplete your glycogen stores in the 40 minutes. But should you wish to take a gel during the race for the second half, please make sure you try that in training beforehand. And remember, if you're racing somewhere particularly hot, then taking water on board throughout is a good idea, but only small steps at a time. Consistency is key for anything, especially when you're aiming for a personal best. Yeah, exactly. So find a target race and then work out your target time and stick to your training plan. And I think on that, I probably should practice what I preach and find a fast 10K course and break that 40 minute barrier. Well, good luck with that, Heather. I hope it goes well. Thank you. And if you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe, please do that here. And if you want to see the video that Heather talked about, about how to warm up for running, then please click here. And if you want to try and work out your run pace for your next triathlon, we've done a triathlon training explain video and that's just here.